Good evening, good afternoon, good morning, wherever you are in this part of the world on this day today. Um, this is episode 394, and we have two special guests from the world of Silat. And our first guest is Miss Hilda Okta of the Suwanda Family System. And our second guest is Mr. Steve Hunting, who is a martial arts practitioner of many years of experience. Before we get started today, guys, I just want to go ahead and say a big thank you to everybody that's watching, everybody that supports the channel. Um, without you, this channel couldn't be what it is. Um, so I want to thank you, each and every one of the viewers that's out there watching and supports the channel and supports these great practitioners and supports the vision that all the moderators and Mr. Uh, Guru Dean Franco has. And uh, without further ado, like I said, I just wanted to go ahead and say that. Let's bring up our two guests all the way from Indonesia. Our first guest hails from the mysterious Southeast Asian country of Indonesia. And we're gonna bring her up now. Good morning, Mrs. Hilda Okta. So there she is there, and we're gonna bring her up now so you guys can see her. Good morning from Indonesia. <laughs> Our second guest, without further ado, is a man with many years of experience and also helpful in introducing and helping um, establish the Suwanda family system. And that is Mr. Steve Hunting. And I'm bringing him up now. Good evening, sir. Good, Good morning. Evening. Good evening. Good afternoon, where we're at in the world today watching. So this is episode 394, guys. Uh, yesterday, we kind of just got into a little bit of uh, what this uh, whole thing of uh, the Swanda family system was about and how I got kind of established. I'm going to give everybody a little taste, a little teaser. Um, so without further ado, we're going to go ahead and, and get into it, guys. And we're going to start with Mr. Uh, Steve Hunting. And we're going to kind of get a little, little insights on uh, the history um, of the Suwanda family system, how he got started and how he introduced it into the United States. So, Mr. Hunting, I'll let you go ahead and tell the tale, tell the story of how this all got started in your involvement. Well, I originally I started in, in, in Pentax Salat in 1975 in a, uh, with an Indonesian student at, at Michigan State University, but uh, um, got involved in... Uh, Manimuda and Suwanda family style in early 1981. I moved to San Francisco in 1980, um, not intending to get be involved in Penjax a lot. I didn't know there was anybody there that did Penjax a lot. Herman Suwanda, Hilda's uncle, um, also moved to San Francisco in 1980. Um, and I happened to see a little ad for him on the billboard at the Indonesian consulate. So I called him and, and uh, um, that's how I got involved in them. He, at the time he was teaching just out of his home in San Francisco. Um, he later expanded, or very, fairly quickly expanded uh, to teaching at UC Santa Cruz and also at Berkeley. Um, and those, those classes were the three main classes. Um, I was kind of lucky in that the San Francisco classes had very, very seldom had other people there. They, they weren't intended to be private classes, but they actually turned out probably 70, 75 percent of the time being private classes. Um, Herman came over. He, Herman was married, came over. He, um, he didn't really intend to make a living at Penjax a lot. He, he was a puppet maker and he had hoped to um, make a living selling puppets. Um, Indonesian puppets. It was a difficult thing to do at the time. There was no internet. It was hard to advertise. When they did advertise, it was in a magazine and it was quite expensive to advertise. A small small ad might cost $100 or more. Um, and so um, it just kind of morphed from puppet making into uh, more of a full-time Penchak Silat um, emphasis. Um, and um, I was pretty much there from the start 
I, at that point, I was the treasurer of Mundamuda in the United States. Um, and I was involved with Herman from the time he got started, basically, until um, he passed away in 1980, in, in 2000. Well, it's a, that's a kind of a, it's not an, it's unusual because it started out, you know, with the intention of, of making those puppets and then it, it, who knows that it would expand and turn to what it is today, just from those humble uh, beginning. Uh, I'm going to turn it over to, uh, to Hilda. Um, I think we talked a little bit yesterday for the viewers that didn't watch of how you got started. Uh, oh, she disappeared. Uh, guys, you're going to have to bear with us here. Uh, Hilda is in, in Indonesia, so the connection is going to be in and out. So you're just going to have to kind of bear with us here. And she'll come back in again. Uh, she's coming back in now. Um, so I promise we'll make it up. We'll make it worth it. We'll make it worth it. <laughs> well, uh, Mr. Hunting's going to play with the, with the puppets while we're uh, waiting for Hilda to come back in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, those those puppets I seen yesterday when she was showing to me are really intricate the way they're uh, the way they're made and 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 like you were saying, um, from doing those puppets, his original vision wasn't even to do Silat. It was just like you said to make it earning doing the puppets. And right, Silat was going to be his hobby over here, and then yeah, yeah. It turned, and it was interesting yeah. watching him make the puppets because he made made them the traditional way. He would. Uh, he would actually use his feet to hold them as he was carving them, and then oh and wow, he, he quite a feat! It was quite a quite an interesting process. Yeah, yeah, it sounds like it because uh, I, I guess like what I'm trying to say is like you never know that that somebody like that who was making puppets would be such an, a deadly person that you wouldn't even suspect that they had that knowledge of of, of sea lot in there. Um, so it's kind of it's kind of a uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, weird thing. Uh, let's go ahead and get Hilda back in here again. There she is. Okay, you're back. I just told I told viewers that we're gonna have a little thing because you're all the way in Indonesia with the signal coming in and out. So before you go, before you fade out again, let's go ahead and start this over again. So I guess one that the our viewers got a little taste yesterday of how your um, your journey into Sea Lot came, obviously through your father um, and you know the family system. So just go ahead and, and if you wouldn't mind telling the viewers of how you got started in your journey and like how you got into sea lot and martial arts in general. Yeah, uh, I'm actually just like started at in past like five or six years. But at first, I just like uh, did my uh, weapons business uh, to my dad representative, just like supplied some weapons to Hawaii. Uh, because last time, like, my dad, like, has the representative in Hawaii. So my dad asked me, like, can you, like, provide them, like, for the weapons, the Sila weapons? I said, okay. But in 2000, I don't know, I can't remember, though. So I was working at, at the TV station as a screenwriter. But my dad, like, it, like I see, like, my dad is, like, you know, like, uh, he's, like, getting older, you know. And I said, like, okay, like, I think he need to help. Because my other brothers, like, uh, I have a lot of uh, siblings <laughs> from uh, from mm -hmm. my mom's side and from uh, my dad's wife, so a lot. So there's uh, none of them I like to see lot. I don't know why. I think not yet. But yeah, so I decided. So, okay, Papa, like I will. I'm quit from uh, my job in Jakarta, and I help my dad for see lot. Just like you know, like promoting the the system, the program that my uncle and my dad created, the Jagabaya. Uh, Jagabaya is that the, the instructor program in Suanda system. So it is like there's a 25 different style in Suanda system there is in the Jagabaya program. So I just like focus to promote that program and still like, you know, like try to reach out to my dad's uh, students. And, mm -hmm. and after that, I see like that's a good opportunity for me to, you know, uh, yeah, good opportunity to sell the weapons and uh, promote the weapons. So since I joined, in, uh, especially in fast on Facebook and social media, so I knew about the, oh, yeah, there's so many different martial arts in the world. So I just, like, joined with this community, with this group, with the FMA, with the you know, different martial arts. So from that, I was thinking, okay, it's a nice, like, be, like, open-minded, you know, like, yeah, it's not only about my family, but still that I, I love to... to uh, learn and practice different um, martial arts, even not practice because, you know, even in my family system alone, it's a lot of, of, of uh, technique from different styles. Mm -hmm. But 
it doesn't hurt though if like I like try to learn a different martial art. So from that, like yeah, I from in uh, on this podcast, I wanna say thank you to all of my friends yeah. on Facebook and Welcome. all of my customers who support me. So without you guys, I won't be here, you know, survive, <laughs> still like post and share the knowledge about the Sila, about my culture, about my business as well. Thanks to my partner uh, in Florida who helped me to store my weapons. So yeah, uh, yeah, I'm happy and grateful. Uh. It is just from my dad because mm. I was like, uh, like I grew up with my grandma mm. uh, when I was 10 years old. My dad keep like forced me to, to like do a sila, you know, join in the competition. Even I didn't want it, but I, I did it. So I stopped when I was in the middle school, not really practice sila, and I started again uh, in 2012. Helped my dad teaching sila in the government school for the kids uh, for grade uh, grade five to grade uh, six, and. From there, I stopped again, I work in Jakarta in 2015, yeah, 2015, start the weapons and help my dad. I'm merely my dad assistant, so please don't call me guru. Guru is my dad, I'm just like Hilda, you know, well, Bang Bang Suana daughter. <laughs> um, but we got a couple of people uh, checking in. Uh, if you're watching the channel now, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Uh, Mr. Frank Chikoski, hello from Connecticut. Uh, Matthew Alberico, greetings from Bay Area, and Token Ako, uh, Guru Paul, good morning, good morning to you too. Uh, Kurt the Mighty Brown Man, from, all the way from Alaska, he's giving you guys a rubber chicken salute. So, <laughs> uh, the Grand Pooba, Dean Franco, hi hey everyone, he's uh, checking in. Uh, Chad Bailey, Guru Chad, listening in Miami. Um, so, I'm going to go back to, uh, to uh, Mr. Hunting. So we got the story of how you uh, met uh, Guru Herman and how, you know, you got involved in the organization. What, what happened uh, next? Like, where did you take it from there after meeting him and, and learning about his making the puppets? Like, what, what happened next, like, as far as your journey and the next steps of, uh, of, 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 of forming the system? Well, I continued to practice with him. Though. Um the system we Jack practiced at the time was the Monday Muda system as it was developed in the 1970s mm -hmm. with his father and himself. Uh, and uh, Dadang also uh, helped develop that system. Um, and he taught, as I say, in the Bay Area um, mm -hmm. for about eight years. Um, and, and during that time, I was, I was, the treasurer of Monday Muda and, and, and uh, um, just about that was it. I guess I just practiced with him and, and helped him teach on occasion and, and uh, did some demonstrations. We did uh, some parades. We did the, the Lions Parade one year in San Francisco and we do it, did uh, several demonstrations at the Independence Day uh, ceremonies in San Francisco. Um, and then at some of the universities, you see uh, oh, yeah. Santa Cruz has a large there was a large Indonesian uh, uh, musical and dance group there. We we did some demonstrations there, and and also up in uh, Sonoma County a few a few times, um, and and just just kind of enjoyed mm -hmm. himself and learned learned uh, um, what I could from him. And, and that, uh, how did your how did your like uh, I guess I was was trying to allude to is how did how did your action with with Hilda's father like like how did it all come into play? How did you meet him and how did you system? I went to Indonesia in 1984. Uh, Indonesian ranking systems are not standard ranking systems. They, they, they start with a black belt. So you, you start out with a black belt and then you, you, you progress on. Uh, in Monday Mood is black, then green, red, white. is usually the highest level and there's yellow for family members who, who are the top level. Um, mm -hmm. What's and the in 1984, I went to Indonesia to uh, test for my white belt, and um, that's where I met Bob Bang for the first time. He was still quite young; he was 18, 19, somewhere in that area. Oh wow! And um, so I met him. I met I met the whole family at that point. Although I had met actually his mother, his grand, Hilda's grandmother, Herman's mother, 
had come to San Francisco about 1982 or so, and I had met her there. She had, she had stayed there for about six or eight weeks. Uh, so I knew her slightly from, from uh, that visit, uh, but the, met the rest of the family in that 1984, 1985 timeframe. So it, it, what, 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 it, what attracted you from learning from Hilda's father, like, like, like to setting up the school and, and, and getting it onto the, all that, that stuff like that? Like becoming representative, and then like what 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 made you decide like to to go into that path of doing that rather than just kind of just going to doing something else? Well, I don't I don't really train with her with with Bang Bang. We I, I I do learn from her a little bit, but I'm not a formal student of his. I was I was a student of Herman's for twenty mm -hmm. years, um, but I, I'm I'm representative of his school. I I know the family history and I know this the style and. The, and so I help them with teaching online occasionally. I help them with with organization and that type of thing. Um, but yeah, but Bang Bang is a, actually a very good teacher. He uh, yes, he's he, uh, curriculum man. Yeah, he's a. Uh, I think Hilda said he's a quiet man, and, and I see a lot of the the videos of him. He doesn't talk a lot. So he's very quiet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he's more of a uh, a shower rather than somebody who like kind of like. Gets, and I like that. He's really, it seems like he's, I never met him before and I never talked to him. Um, I've seen his videos and I see he's like very, like very humble. So, uh, so Hilda, going back to you, um, <clears throat> with your, with your father uh, uh, teaching you, you basically had like an in-house teacher, like uh, what made you want to start getting into teaching others? Like what, what made you get the bug? Because teaching obviously is like, it's, it's not for everyone. Some people just want to be practitioners and some people don't want to teach. Some people just want to keep that knowledge to themselves. Um, so what made you kind of veer into the direction of, you know, carrying the legacy, like you said, keeping the legacy on and wanting to spread that to students all over the world? Like what, what, what made you interested in that? I'm, um, I try to be like a, just flexible, you know, like because different like, 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 in this era, like martial art, they have different like specialists, right? Mm -hmm. But in Silla, especially in my family system, because they have like, you know, like a lot of stuff. And mm -hmm. for me, I just like focus and prefer like, you know, to to complete my Jagabaya. Uh, yeah, my, my Jagabaya, because that's already like all in one from mm -hmm. that. But honestly, you know, if I got choice, like I prefer to teaching women and kids, because like uh, this year, I will like uh, uh, just got the job from the international school for for still at uh, extracurricular finally, and and yeah, it's it's it, that's what I that's what I like uh, teaching the women and and yeah, in the future, like my dad said, like just practice like what I give you. So he just randomly, you know, he teaches yeah. me like the Chicago, he teaches me the Chimande, but so I'm used to uh, practice. I will I will share here like honestly. I didn't really like practice like uh, yeah uh, basically. I like mostly I practice like like in my mind before I sleep because like you know I'm as a four like a mother of four kids. It's now I'm like complete my education in the law school and I'm taking uh, taking care of my business. So I don't have any time for exercise or for for practice so i didn't take any class uh right now uh because you know i'm 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 quite busy but you know like for me like if something like my dad give like uh, tell me okay so this term is will be good try so he always like challenge me mm. so if he give me like for example like chikalong because chikalong that's like, that's the the good chikalong and sura in in my my family system the chikalong is you know the 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 practitioner like move so quickly and lightly and my dad tell me like what what what, what are you gonna do with this technique and he just like sent me like one video yeah i said okay let me see so i try so before i i i did i did the, the technique i like practice in my mind before i sleep mm -hmm. okay so this technique will be the, okay this technique okay <laughs> so i try in the morning when i wake up i take my favorite weapon <laughs> i use the crumbit i apply the crumbit for the chick along and i tell my dad and you know what he said you don't need to practice with me. It's not like that. <laughs> you got still a spirit already. So from that, okay. So I just like you know teach people or share with the people randomly. 
about silat, about chikalong, about uh, chimande, about the weapons, you know. So I don't really like, you know, like like strict, you know, like I have to do this or to do that or teach the the students like very, you know, like tough or stiff. Mm. No, but for me, like focus on jagabaya because all of the styles in and uh, my family system there is in that program. Mm -hmm. So that's so great. Mm -hmm. So it all stems from that, from the Jigabaya, you said, right? That's where the, all the curriculum stems from, is from that one, that one thing that you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, um, I practice just randomly. So uh, for a, a question for, for Mr. Hunting. So uh, in your in your your experience, because you've had a lot of experience, obviously with with Silat, um, what what is it? What does he? What do you think about the other like? Because like you have to educate, I guess, like the people that are here. Like a lot of people really aren't like. Some people are silat practitioners that are watching. Some people aren't. Uh, the difference between the pen, penchak silat, the penjak silat, and then there's Malaysian silats, like Barentai and stuff like that. So in your experience, like, do you have, like, experience of other systems or just this one system of silat? Well, I, I've practiced with some Malaysian folks. They're, 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 their silat's very similar. Um, I've practiced... Uh, a couple of a different styles before mm -hmm. I got into Monday Muda. Um, they all have their good points and bad points. The uh, uh, main style I practiced before Monday Muda was a, from Eastern Java. So they, they tended to um, emphasize footwork more than, and, and kicking and tripping and, and that type of thing more than the uh, Western Javanese. Um, as Petjaks come more of a sport that Distinction, they used to be considered West Javanese were hand specialists, East Javanese were foot specialists, and Central Javanese mm -hmm. were kind of a blend of both. Um, as it's become more of a sport, that distinction has kind of faded because you have to follow the rules for the sport if you want to want to, want to uh, be successful. So, uh, But um, I find it interesting that the majority of Silat that's taught in the United States, taught around the world, which I've talked to people in Europe also, is from either from West Java or from uh, um, Matra. Very little out of East Java is, is taught, although there are a lot of large styles in East Java, but um, they are more closed in the fact that they don't, they want you to be loyal to their style. Mm -hmm. uh, certain style like Siete Hate, which is one that I did, when you reach a certain level, you have to take a pledge, you will never study any other martial art. Wow. So that, and Westerners don't tend to care for that. Yeah. They, they yeah, like to uh, experiment and blend. And, and uh, so, um, uh, so, so some systems, I mean, and this question is for both of you, because like, uh, like I said, I, I, I recently uh, did some of the, uh, the Silat under the Thor, the Thor brothers. Uh, mm -hmm. And I got the instructor Shaman under, under Guru Burton. Um, where a lot of it was like, you know, it was simplified down enough for, for realistic self-defense. Um, but I obviously didn't get the whole system. Uh, you know, there wasn't that many jurus and stuff like that in there that's in there. Right. Um, but, uh, is there some systems like, and like I said, it's questions for both of you that are more weapons based than rather than empty hand and, and, and tripping and kicking and footwork, or they all just pretty much incorporate the weapons um, I'll just let you, Mr. Hunting, answer that question from your experience, and I'll let Hilda go ahead. And, um. In my experience, they all incorporate weapons. They, they may have their own special weapon, their own favorite weapon, but they all uh, incorporate weapons as well as empty hands. Mm -hmm. And Hilda, with, in a, with your with your dad system, with with the system we're doing now, um, are you guys more weapons based, or kind of just a mixture of everything? Empty hand and weapons, kicking. Oh, we actually, uh, why is this like freeze? Yeah. Oh, you see me now? Can you hear me? <laughs> yeah, I can hear you. <clears throat> okay. But you guys don't move. Yeah. <laughs> it's weird. It's the reception yeah, so, right now. Um, yeah, well, uh, we actually like, prefer for the empty hands because in still art, it's more about empty hand. Uh, in the past, uh, even like, now, like, because it is from the people, like, mostly like to practice the weapons uh, technique. Mm -hmm. But 
in Silata, actually, we like practice or do the demo or, or solo like more about the empty hand, you know, and we use the go the, the, the weapons uh, as a Silat tools only for the, you know, competition for the Kembangan, mm -hmm. but we have the, the, the technique, you know, the, for the, in my dad's system, in my family system, we use the, the Krambit, Golak, Kujang, so my, as, as like I mentioned about the Jagabaya, in Jagabaya as well, in, in level three, we already start uh, uh, with the weapons uh, technique for the Kujang, Krambit, and Golak. So I think I can't I can show you the, the, the weapons when I mentioned about the weapon. I want to show you the weapons, but it's uh, like free. Oh, okay. Um, can you see us now? We can see you. Can you see us now? Yeah, we can see so you. I can think you she thinks we're, we're frozen. It's probably the yeah. It, it's a connection over there. Yeah. I mean, it is it is Indonesia, yeah. so it's several thousand miles away. Yeah. So uh, I know when we have a guest from the Philippines, we have that same problem with it with the reception. Let's see if she comes back in again. Um, uh, let's see right now if she comes back in. Um, while we're while we're waiting or not. Um, I, I understand what she was saying about the the, yeah, the weapons, like the Karambit obviously is, you know, we're not going to get into the whole debate of the FMA, but right. it, it is a C-Lot weapon, obviously. Um, so I, all, all C-Lot systems, you know, practice Karambit and go lock until she's back in here again. Nah, I move now before it's like okay. free. Okay, um, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lower both Mr. Hunting and us down so you can show the weapons. So I'm gonna lower both of us down. You go ahead and, and yeah, show it. Do you want me to sell the weapons? So it seems like I promote my business. <laughs> no, no, I mean, well, no, well, I mean, well, we just want to like we wanted to explain the weapons, like you guys using your system, stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. In the in Jagabaya program, we my dad like uh, teach the the crumbit, uh, the crumbit technique, the golak, and. It is like, and I want to start with you here. There is the technique that my uncle created in a 19, 1990 age. I think like, I forget, like my dad tell me about that. So it called it Sabatan. Can you hear me? So we're just letting we're just letting you have the the screen time. Oh, she faded out. Wow, gotta love that. We gotta love that uh, that cell phone service over there in Indonesia, I guess. Yeah, so yeah. <laughs> we're bringing Mr. Yeah. Hunting back again. <clears throat> I was trying to, uh, yeah, I was trying to. What I want to do is I wanted to give her the whole screen. That way she can show the weapons and explain to them. Okay. Yeah, she yeah. Here, she's coming in right now. So I'm gonna lower both of us down right now, and she can go ahead and, and do her thing as right. she's showing it. Uh, let me see if she comes back on again. Let's see. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The internet's oh. not. Really good. Uh, we perfectly understand. So uh, we're gonna we're gonna lower ourselves down, and you just go ahead and explain the weapons that you have there to, to the audience. So we're gonna lower ourselves down, and you have the floor, and then we'll come back when you're done. Yeah, this is the this is the important weapon uh, in uh, Pencaksila. You know, not only in my family system, because this uh, weapon, it is the, the silat tool for the competition, you know, for the kembangan. So the kembangan is the, the art in silat when you move with the music. So here, this is a standard, the standard uh, golak, standard of blade for silat. So it, there's a different size as well. So this is for adult, it's a quite long, and then for the teenagers and for kids. So this golak, is the main weapon in Silat. So we use it, uh, yeah, for the demonstration. And, but, you know, we use it as a, like for the technique that I said before. So when you use this, this Golak, it's super just simple because, you know, Golak's not only for the Silat because here in Indonesia, they use it for the, as an the agricultural, for the Golak, cutting the tree, cutting the wood, soil, you know, and, and so this Golak, this is like the silat uh, golak. So we call the Ipsi golak. So Ipsi is the Indonesian Pencak Silat Association. So here. And then we got the, the Krambit. So the Krambit, it is just like, you know, it's not, I think it's just like 
uh, not like really like long because the crime is a new uh, technique in my my uh, family system. I think even like uh, Mr. Steve like tell me that before my uncle created the crumbit, he designed the crumbit, like my dad said in 19, 1993. So he designed the crumbit. So I believe that in my uncle era that he already like teach the crumbit. But for me, like now that the crumbit, like, you know, uh, we just like practice, not practice the teaching the crumbit. It's, it's been like, I think three years or four years for the crumbit. But yeah, as I told you, the main weapon is the golap and the kukumachan. So this Kukumachan get, have the story because the Kukumachan, uh, we actually have a four uh, weapons, and the Kukumachan is the design for the Sabatan uh, style. Sabatan style is uh, my uncle, like the, like my dad tell me. So he create the technique for Sabatan in US, and which is like, like you know, the many people like many like students are like that the technique. So the Sabatan this is the 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 uh, blade, so the design, the curve of the citizen for the slice, because sabotans are about the slicing, or you like slice, right, like this. This is the uh, sabotan, and this is the sabotan technique, and we call it kukumachan. Kukumachan is actually the tiger nails, but it's quite big, right? The tiger nails, it's like, because the, the, the curve here, it sounds like, uh, looks like the tiger nail, that's why we call it kukumachan. And as the, the our weapon as a Sundanese is actually the Kujang. It's Kujang is our pride. This is the our uh, uh, Kujang from the, our kingdom, the Pajajaran kingdom. It's the Kujang is very unique, and then it's to use it. It's very like multifunctional. You can like stab. You can just like do the arm lock with this curve, and from this you can just like it's not like this here. Just like stab here. So it's, it's, it's very, uh, like, you know, uh, good for, for, but my dad is like prefer to teach the Kujang and the Golak uh, and put this uh, technique, the weapons technique in Jagabaya. But yeah, but actually like, you know, uh, uh, many people like ask me for uh, teaching the knife, like does your, your dad is teaching the knife technique? Yes, we teach the knife technique and, and talking about the stick as well, in, in Silat, not only in again, it's not only from my uh, family system. The stick we use the stick as well, so we call the tongkat. So we call tongkat in uh, Indonesia, and use uh, they use it as a silat tool as well for the uh, competition uh, in Ipsi. But they use the the long one. But here we use in my family system. We use this uh, stick, the stick technique from the Cimande. This is Chimande uh, application. Use the stick. So that's why, like uh, last time, I I show you the difference. So in in Chimande, Chimande in Chimande style, we we call this a go go bangan. So from here, so it's like you know, we use we how the way we use the stick in Chimande. So it's like I saw like uh, this is like for like a direction like this. Like one, this is a block here, and one, two, here like this. So it's uh, from the, uh, yeah, it looks like some people say like it's similar like the FMA or like I uh, did like for my Facebook live before, like, yeah, it's similar like FMA, the movement, but actually it's not uh, the same, not even like close, you know, for, for the technique because uh, in Silat, we use this as we use the gola or you do like a hit or you do like a block and you like, uh, down like this so like but we have to move which is like a four direction because the four direction is like why we have to move like one two three four, four because it is you when you are against the multiple opponent using this and it is like this form you can use it as well for the uh, the competition uh, uh material when you like you know like do the demonstration with uh, like multiple the opponent and you have to move like this like here and block and put like this so yeah this is the so we we got the like four the five like the knife knife the knife uh and stick kujang kukumachan and krambit but yeah uh actually indonesian like you know we have so many like uh different tribes 
and they 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 have their own uh, weapons, you know. But if I talk in the silat in the context of silat, yeah. So we only use these five weapons: the golak, krambit, kujang, uh, like stick, and uh, kukumachan. Even oh. about the Renchong Aceh, last time, yeah, Renchong Aceh is a part of the Indonesian uh, tribe, you know, like, uh, mm. yeah, the Renchong Aceh, last time, like, Mr. Steve tell me, like, my uncle used it, but don't really teach it, so mm. I, so you, this is the yeah. Renchong Aceh, if you mm. see the history of Aceh, it's so great, so it is a uh, Renchong Aceh, this is the traditional, I've never way. seen that before ever, is that like a, it's like a type of knife? Yeah. Yeah, wow. but I'm like Mr. Steve, like know about that, about the story when my uncle used this weapon. But it's quite big. But before, like he used the small one and on, uh, on, uh, like big one too. Uh, I'll let you go ahead and uh, and go ahead and explain that real quick. I have to go get my battery charger, so I'll let you and uh, Mr. Hunting go and explain that weapon. Sure. You want to, you want to, you want yeah, to here, here this is the Rancho Ache, but we don't use this uh, weapon in my family system. We don't use uh, this uh, weapon. We don't have the technique for this. But I just want to show you this is the one of the traditional weapons from Indonesia, from Ache. But last time that you mentioned like to me about my uncle used the Rancho Ache, but it's not really, you know, it's not like teach this, this weapon, just like saw it or try. Yeah, he didn't teach it. Yeah, he didn't teach it. It's it, the usage is kind of like a push dagger. You, if you look at the handle, it uh, um, you, you can kind of palm it and push it in into somebody. It's it's not a slicing weapon; it's a stabbing weapon. Um, but yeah, he he would do it in demonstrations occasionally, but it wasn't a weapon mm -hmm. taught. That so so that's more of a a uh, ceremonial kind of like more than actual use an actual weapon you you would use. Well, he would you you could use it. It was, it was it was just not something that was big in. It's not big in Java for that for mm -hmm. the most part. But it's, it's used in a similar way to a push dagger. If, if the the handle is, is you can you can push it with your palm, and it's a stabbing weapon. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's not really a slicing weapon. It's a stabbing weapon. Um, yeah. Uh, but it, it wasn't it's not big in, in I've never even one. seen it before till you showed it to me right now. I thought when I first thought I thought she was like an easy to eat or something like that. I was like, what is that? Yeah, slender blade for stabbing. That a uh, sea lot one thing about sea lot, they had some strange looking weapons like that. What was the, what was the one? I, I know the Golok and then the Kukumachu, that one with the tiger claw. Um, because that's what the idea with the karamic came from, right? So like the claw that right. yeah. Um yeah. But what was that other one that you had that you said you could hook the arm? It was kind of weird looking, looking like a leaf. Uh, start with a P. What was, which one was it? I don't. It was a weird looking one. It's kind of flat. You said you could hook the arm with it. You could stab with it, st slash with it. It's right after the Golok you showed. The Trisula. No, not the Trisula. Not the. I know what the Trisula. The, the other one. It's like a. It kind of goes like that. No, 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 no. Was it no? I forgot what name was. No, it was. Before. I'm not very good at the pizza. Yeah. So, Bujang, yeah. So, yes. Bujang, yeah. Okay, I've seen it before. I don't really know what People it write it wrong, so I have to spell it pro uh, properly. Kujang, so K U A Kujang. So, so is Kujang is a, is a ceremonial looking, like a ceremonial type weapon, or is it an actual weapon that they would use? Like in combat or like in the street? Ah, uh, really. The the Trisula used it as your pride, as a Sundanese, actually. Mm. But my dad said, like, because last time when we used the Trisula as our main uh, weapon, Angola, and my dad told me that actually we, our weapon as a Sundanese is a uh, Kujang. Even the, for Kujang, we have a different type for male and female. So not only oh. human being like human, <laughs> the, the the weapons have the male and female as well. The what's different is just the shape here. So this is a uh, like here. Now this is the for for women. For for men, this is just a bit like bigger here uh, on the tip. So and for the kujang, 
we it's, have so many different types types of the blade. There's the and uh, the name as well. So in the in the Pajajaran kingdom, you know, like they use it if like for like the hopping, you know, for in the future. So they make the hole here. The hole here is like, like. So Mr. Steve, like, can you explain it, like, about the the hole? On yeah, that? that's a weird looking weapon. That's strange. They're a ceremonial. Each of the holes, each of the each of the little designs, the cutouts is a, is a ceremonial. Herman told me he did he didn't know what a lot of them was. He had to refer with his father to um, what what a lot of them were. But yeah, a lot of that design is ceremonial. Um, well, it's not something that somebody would a, a practitioner say in battle or like would use. It was more like just for like flow movement. Like that. For the most part, yeah, I, I think it may have been used at one point, but for the most part, it's I know there's some it. systems that do teach fighting techniques with that weapon, but I, I just couldn't like really see it as something of not. I want to say a value. I want to diminish yeah. the use of the weapon, but I'm saying like it's not something I would carry, like you know, like a karambit or a knife, like you know, what I mean, it's like right. something it's just kind of dance around with or whatever, and it kind of that's what always reminded me of anyway. I know I sound like an an, an educated Westerner, which I am. But uh, you know, I guess I guess never really saw. I've seen a lot of people use it. It's just like to me, like I never really like like the design of it. It just looked. Weird. Yeah, it is to that nowadays primarily. Yeah. Primarily so 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 the Golok and the Karamba is basically and the and the the Tursala is like the main. Uh, if you just tell people that's like the main like see a lot weapons bladed weapons anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, if I talk in general about the silat, yeah, the trisula, golak, and and the stick, uh, they use it. So, but crumbit is just like like not 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 you know like it's recently like the the crumbit not. Gotten, yeah, it's popular because it's small and looks cool, and everybody wants to use. It. I know it was in a you know like a a woman's weapon to start out originally and stuff like that. We know that like the history of it, um, but some people still can't accept the history. But that's a whole other show. But uh, we've had, uh, you know, Professor Jack uh, Othman, uh, we've had him on here talking about the history of the Quran, but, and uh, that was like a really, a real big watch show. And he gave the whole history, like you said, from the tiger's claw all the way to the, you know, the modern versions of it. Um, and I've seen like, I've held some of the, the, the original ones and they're tiny, like they're real small, like they're pointed out and they're only like that big. So they're real tiny. So this, so this is, this, this one here is like a more modernized version of Quran, but, like for the for these like these modern times, this is like this wouldn't be like a traditional karambit, right? Because I've seen traditional ones, so this is more like you know it looks cool, but I'm saying it's it's not like what they had back a long, in the day a long time ago. It's actually like my dad tell me and my my dad system. So there's a two different blade for mm -hmm. and two different like you know function. So mm -hmm. for the the big one here, you can see the curve. This is for like slice, slice mm -hmm. and do slicing. But mm -hmm. the small one is just for hook and for do the arm lock and hook, you know, like here. This is just a small. Sure. I don't yeah. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, thank you for showing the weapons. Though. Like, I, 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 that's what I wanted to, to, to get on there was to, to show some of those weapons that a lot of people don't know about because everybody knows about the bolo in FMA. You know, we've got Gununting, bolo, and, you know, Kampalan, stuff like that. But I, I wanted people to see the, some of those sealot weapons that nobody's seen. Everybody's seen the Karamit, but like the Golok and, and that, uh, the Kujang, stuff like that. No one's ever seen that. Um, so we, we've talked about, like, you know, like, your father's system and, and, and what he does and what he teaches and everything like that. Um, like for now, we know you have like the goals, like you guys want, you guys are like pretty much worldwide already, right? Like you have students all over the world. Like you were telling me, we're talking about before. Um, so like with, with, uh, with, with that being said, like Mr. Hunting, do you like still, I guess they said, do you have a school over there in, in Indonesia? I don't, have, I don't have a school. I, I, I help them with their okay. online teaching and, and, uh, that type of thing, but uh, yeah, I don't have a, a school. Currently. But are, so you're not active um, in in like the whole system now. You're just kind of like stepping back from it for a while. Yeah, I'm not an advisor. I'm mid seventies. Yeah, oh, yeah. There's no reason. Yeah, you have nothing left to prove. Yeah, exactly. Um, but you do have a wealth of knowledge. That's why I said I wanted wanted to have you on here. Um, and uh, with your father, Hilda, um, like when when he teaches, like. Has he ever traveled outside of Indonesia, or is it just kind of Indonesia where he's at now? Yeah, he's 
he wore a trifle like yeah we plan out to for trifle to you ask for my dad but you know the, the, the it's not easy to make a visa but yeah, yeah I discussed with us deep hunting about this and or we we use like we used to like hold a seminar uh before you know every year mm. in summer but mm. that they're not longer like you know join in and authorize in mm. my dad system just like you know just fuck my dad's focus the local and teaching the his students online and keep like you know monitoring the the, the jagabaya instructor so like yeah, at the moment my dad's only like for the Westerners. He only like you know teaching yeah, online. Yeah, is he teaching any? Is he teaching any military forces over there, or has he taught any military forces in the past? Or because let let the uh, you know in the past, especially in Bandung, in my granddad era, so my family system is well known. You know, in militaries like uh, in military and the police mm. well. So even now, like we just like being friends, you know, like they know, like, oh yeah, that's uh, the Bang Bang from uh, Uyu Suanda. So uh, let's uh, step uh, like hunting, like tell a bit story about that. They related to like our, you know, the, the family system, like related to the military uh, and then the police, because, you know, even now, like my dad's still teaching some of the students, there's from the police and the military as well. Mm. But you know, really, because you know, actually, honestly, like my dad's like just not uh, really active teaching because he just like you know, like like leave everything to me. But because you know, I'm busy, so I can just promote again about the my 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 dad program, my mm. program. Because you know, I only like if I have time to share or just like you know, like mm. like post. Not really like teaching right now because I'm busy. But doesn't, he have a, doesn't he have a trip to Thailand yeah, coming up? Or he, so last time, time uh, there is the, the, the Muay Thai master invite my dad, like on, in a long time ago, but my dad didn't make it because uh, I said uh, it's hard to get. Uh, but there is the, my dad here, hopefully, he's watching. So, the, uh, so Anthony, he was like training with my dad when he was 17 years old. Oh wow! Yeah, uh, with Uncle Herman, uh, like two times. So he visit my dad again. He now like he's like forty three years old, and and he tell my dad that the Muay Thai like the one Muay Thai instructor or Muay Thai master like w like want to invite the Bang Bang Suanda because last time he tried to invite but he didn't go there, and yeah he will go in uh, like in May to Thailand. What, to like, like a fight, like a challenge fight, or like a tournament fight, or what? The so that the guy want to practice with my dad. Because oh, last, okay. I thought you meant he tried to fight him. Like trying to fight, like he yeah. hated him or something. I was like, what? <laughs> Still doing challenge? Anthony lives in Thailand now, so Anthony's got some ties in Thailand. So he. Oh, uh, okay. Um, is, is there is the family system like is any of your guys' family system is like is there any sport aspect to it? Is it just all like self defense and like combat like combatives or is it just all is is there any like sports like do you guys do sports tournaments do you have any students that do sports tournaments or we did yeah we do the, the sport as well so i'm actually you know like even i don't know like why the the westerners like say like oh is this that the traditional is it sport or combative but for me you know who like really well, like I, told do you I was a dumb westerner i'm asking dumb questions so. <laughs> traditional or combative for yeah. me all the technique is about like a sport or combative but it's a different term because you know specifically like for example i will can can i do the demo here oh yeah yeah i you know what I'm a, I, we've been having a good time talking i forgot uh guys i'm gonna lower myself down and uh hilda's gonna do some demos um yeah i know we want to see him so i'm gonna lower myself down i i'm sorry i got carried away here and we both got carried away i'll lower us down mr hunting and i'll let let uh, hilda do her thing yeah so if we talk about the sport we actually teach the sport for the kids because there's two different organizations in indonesia there's ppsi and ipsi so ipsi is more about the sport uh, the competition but ppsi is more about the traditional so uh what's the different of the movement for the sport and and traditional even when we move you know even looks so like flow like it's like a flow technique 
but it is very like combative because you know like I will saw you was different. For example, it's like for Tikalong because the Tikalong is about the like you know you get the abundance from the outside, right? This is the Tikalong. So it is like some people say this is like a flow or traditional. It is traditional, but we can use in a sport term for that. It sounds like the for number one, it's like for the, the hands technique, right? This is what what, uh, what we teach for the kids. So for the uh, sport, even we have to rely to our like horse stance, the kuda kuda here, here. So even like traditional or sports, no matter like what your uh, what the form you learn from Sila, the kuda kuda is still the main uh, foundation, the uh, the important like foundation you have to learn because from here you know like how to handle yourself and handle your your opponent. This is like uh, from the the like, sport. This is the, the form for the sport. One like this. So, and and the sport in Silat, we don't use the the high kick like this. No, in Silat, even a sport, we use the the kick just like here, or you use this is like like sweep here, that. So that's that's a sport. But the sport form it has taken from the traditional like uh, form from the Chikalong, you know, from Chimande because and then from Sara because Sara is like more about the the speed. Kind of like this so that that's the you know for me the sport or the aspect of the combat or the traditional or the art for me it's still it's the same the difference is because like you know some people use the sport in the competition not really a uh, teach it actually you know because for me as uh, yeah you know especially in my family system we teach sport only for the kids for yeah start in grade seven to grade ten that's a sport because the, in Ipsi, in Silat Indonesian Protective Association, required the the you know the the student like for the sport, even for the Silat athlete, they use uh the the, the sport a term in Silat. But yeah, I can say it's not really a Silat though because the the movement still looks like a taekwondo. But if we talk about Silat sports, it's not like that. It's not like what you see from the video when you do like like. Ha! Like this, no, because it's like a taekwondo like this, and we don't we don't just be like boom like this, no. So this is like about like sweep and kick like this, or you can like stamp your feet. That's the the, the still as kicks like sweep and sweep outside like, or, or inside and like, kick like this. So we don't use the like high kick like that. So that's not a uh, still as, but that use it for the. Uh, sport, the silat sport, and uh, for the competition. Yeah, for example, so ah, so for this is the if you talk about the combative, I just wanna show you one of the technique from Sara. It is a combative like technique. So this is like from from uh, Sara because Sara we don't really use the footwork. We rely on the hand speed. That's why like. Practice the surprise, you know, you have to practice it properly because, you know, you have to like move or like quickly, as quick as you can. Because like, look, like this, here. Now from here, so the surprise, we don't use the like, like flow or move more like this or like this, no. But in surprise, we just like, blah. here, just boom. Here, this is surprise. From Sara here, it's the same like a chikalong because chimande chikalong the Sara is the same like look similar, uh, but it's just uh, like different from now. Nah, it's like this is Sara here, boom. So we go here, but for the chikalong we use the elbow here from here. So that that is from if you see it from the aspect of the combative, and then it is like for the chica long, you look the same like move it also like a side outside the the opponent. Here, from here, you can see it's a stem, but for for the sara, we just like a barrier block here and punch like a straight to the point like this, but for the Tikalong, because Tikalong is about like 
uh, breaking or locking. This is for the T column here. So from, from this, we can just grab here the neck and turn here to, to like break the head. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Sorry. <laughs> The break here and punch like that. Boom. But you know, again, when uh, when you say like a sport, we don't use that uh, form for the uh, sport. But that is combative sport. I think for me, you know, the form is different. But yeah, is he okay? I think it's not really different. <laughs> is he okay? It looks like he dislocated his elbow. <laughs> oh, hang on, I need to be fun. Oh, wow, that was great. That was great. Uh, are, are, are you going to show any more, or do you want me to bring Mr. Head up? Yeah, just like, you know, I just want to show okay. this, the differences a bit, like the sport movement. <laughs> okay. no, no, it was good, though. It was a good demo. I liked it, uh, the way you spun him around. So it's kind of like a, like a, a, a windmill, wheelbarrow throw, or whatever, right? So when you go around like that, like you spin him around and kind of, yeah. Most C-Lot systems, I, I've seen that because I saw a couple of them have, have that, like the different variations of that of that movement. Yeah, yeah. Was that yeah. your brother? Was that your brother? Huh? Was that your brother? So that, that's why oh, it's thank like, you. It's always <laughs> that, you know, our, our, our ready position or something like that. C-Lot is always like this because mm -hmm. here, when you your hands like this, this is like for you to block like this. But mm -hmm. sounds like the when you do like this, you know, like. Here, like this. So just does that. So in still up, continue. Poor guy. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna lower that. We lower. I'll lower myself down. <laughs> so this is like this. We oh, before we, we 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 practice the technique. This is like what we use to practice to get the flexibility of your hands movement, like this, right? Not for for dance. It's different. You look looks like a dance, you know, like do like this and like this. But uh, for the uh, you know like demo and like demonstration, it's very like helpful when you got the flexibility of your hands and sensitivity. Like my dad said, like when you fight in the real situation or in a competition, don't focus to see like the the, uh, the, the opponent's movement, but focus to see the eyes because you know the eyes that will tell you when you move, right? So that's why, like from here, like that's why, like my uncle book saying, like through my eyes, because yes, this camera kind of, like, from through your eyes to see like everything, you know, like but, like this. This is like what uh, when I pukul here. That's why like, one two pukul, one pukul ya, one two pukul, one two two pukul. Oh, what's <laughs> that? <laughs> okay. Oh, sorry. And boom. Just like that. Boom. Or you kind of boom here. Pukul. Oh, here. Like this. Pukul. 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 <laughs> that. This. That. So that's why this is like good like uh, exercise, you know, in still out when you like move and uh, like, like you know, get it faster, 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 faster. And from that, you can like do the technique easily for the hands technique. That's, that's, we call the, that's like a bandringan. We call the bandringan. Uh, in some of those movements, like, yeah, I see like a lot of FMA systems with the same thing with the passing, like that. So you can see the, the C lot influence definitely. And a lot of the FMA empty hand stuff, uh, I'll see, you know, the Western boxing and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, that was, yeah, that, that was great. That was great. That was, that was a great demo. I appreciate that uh, you doing that. Um, so with, with, your, with your system, um, with the with the type of people that are in there, would you say that you're more of a male based system? We have a lot, or do you have a lot of female students as well? Uh, both a female and male. Like an equal ratio of, of both. Because, like, if you like, if I see from the story, uh, from my grandma, you know, from my uncle, mm. so, yeah, I tell you, like, my granddad is actually the wrestler. Or here in Indonesia, in Sundanese, we call Bang Jang. It's exactly the same, like a wrestling, like rest, like uh, uh, wrestling. But oh. my, yeah, my granddad made my grandma 
And you know, like my grandma moved the mars like a martial art, and he asked her, "So what's that?" And so, like, and my grandma tell him, "Yeah, that is a silat." So from that, my grandma like, took my granddad to her uh, guru in Sikabu, in West Java, and two different guru. One guru, and uh, from the first guru, say like, my granddad is so great, so he have to go to the next level to Chimande. The Chimande, like Haji, yeah, mm -hmm. from from Chimande. Yes. Where the Monday Muda from? Because last time, like before, at first, my dad, my granddad, uh, name of the school is the Gali Pakuan. But mm -hmm. since he learned from Chimande, there's the guru, like you know, tell him just change your 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 school name because I don't know for some reason it's a Monday Muda. So Monday Muda Muda is a young, you know, like Monday is from Chimande. So it's just the the, the generation. Of the Chimande, so they Monday Muda, and this name, you know, mm. you know, right as you know, from me or from my cousin, from my aunt, you know, from my dad sibling, you know, that's yeah, that's a good name too, you know, God, I feel good. Feel. So, thank like you know, well, it, it, came about, you know? Yeah, it came about because your grandmother was a Chimande practitioner, she started in Chimande, so that's why Chimande is kind of the base of, of all of the uh Chimande family styles. Yeah, so they all they're all based on Monday as a as a oh, central oh. reference. Point. So uh, we got a uh, pause for a minute, guys. Uh, we got a couple of people joining in. Uh, Ramon Rebe says hello. After my discussion, uh, Coach Dan Terrell, uh, he's another great practitioner, and he has a lot of experience in Lot as well. I think with the Mandemuda system as well. Um, he's saying hello from Waco. Tommy Hackett says we hear you fine. Uh, Tony Takale, very nice weapons. Uh, Roberto Pagan, uh, greetings, pal M. Rosillis. Hi, guys. Um, if you guys are watching, tell us if you're watching from too as well. Um, this question goes back to Mr. Hunting. Uh, when you started out in the Silat system, did you see was it was pretty much male dominated around the time you started, or was there females as well that were like Hilda, young females that wanted to learn? the system either for self-defense or just for the art it was probably 75 percent male her, her herman when i first started teaching um he only really had one female student for quite a while he he taught very traditionally when he first came over here and it it didn't go over well with americans he, <laughs> <I bet. laughs> he, he, he would test you he would he would probably hurt you not not Big hurts, but bruises and things, just to see if you were serious. And a lot of Americans didn't like that, and a lot of women, especially, didn't like that. So he had had one woman, Patty Rupelt, who uh, was there almost from the beginning. And and uh, uh, as he learned more how to teach Americans, he he uh, got more and more female students. So adapted. As that progressed, he he developed more female students. Because I, I noticed, like you like say, with like with your with your your auntie and your cousin Hilda, like they're 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 doing their practitioners of lot as well, um, and I'm starting to see a lot more women th that I didn't see before. Like I mean, I, I'm not I'm relatively new. Like I'm not like a you know obviously I'm not like Mr. Hunting and that do like martial arts. Well, pretty much your whole life it seems like you've done martial arts. Um, so I, I'm I'm under ten years uh, in in martial arts as far as as far as like you know getting ranked and stuff like that. Um, I started out in Muay Thai it was my first martial art, and then you know went around to 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 FMA right after that. Um, but I, I, I'm starting to see like even when I started like there wasn't many very many women like doing um, Southeast Asian martial arts like a lot FMA. And now you're starting to see more and more, you know, come out. So I guess that's a good thing. Um, uh, all my students that I teach are women with the exception of, of one male. So I don't know if that's, I mean, it's, I don't want to say it's, it's, not a, it's not a bad thing. I mean, I'm glad that there's women that are see value in CELOT and Philippine martial arts. Um, but it's like the males, for some reason, like, uh, you know, BJJ and like boxing and Taekwondo and karate is like the major, like, martial arts that everybody gravitates to but you know i think c lot is such a a, a a beautiful martial art as far as movement um and practicality with the movements and stuff like that and i think that a lot of people should you know explore it more so like with that being said 
as far as you're like with your with your online classes that you you do offer um, um, from time to time, I know you say you're busy now. Um, are you starting to see more Americans get into the, your family system, or is it kind of a mixture of like England, Europe, or is it just like where you're at in Indonesia, or is it just like a, or just basically mostly Western people? At the moment, we teach the uh, we have a representative in Europe uh, in, 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 in Italy. They are the like passed to the level five right now mm. uh, for. The yeah, it's it's really like great achievement because to pass that level is so high. So it's mainly you will become a pandekar. So the pandekar here in Silat is like a high title for a pandekar, you know. And Never. and yeah, we use like I told you like like it's not just now like when the the, the, the martial arts become the popular. It's not only in Silat, but it's random, right? The FFN and and, mm. and the other martial art. Even in the past. Actually, like my dad, just like, you know, like used to teach the American. Uh, mostly of my family system students for my uncle because my uncle and my dad just like mostly is American, like this Mr. Steve, like now it's mostly American. So, but now like my dad see that the serious like which is students serious right? Like at the moment so from uh, Europe, they really like practice Serbian. But why my dad, like my dad, tell me, uh, he said like I prefer to get like one or two students, but the the great one. But mm. after that, he they spread my technique properly, and 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 teach the right uh, technique because he doesn't like to get the like you know bunch like people you know from this and that, but they don't really like practice serious. So at the moment, we don't really you know I don't know like I will see uh, if is that good that I will try to reach out again to American. Uh, you have to to practice. Some people like ask me like if I teach uh, online or join in. But yeah, like I said, like at the moment we, we, we're not teaching. But yeah, in the future, I think we will try to uh, contact the, some people or some representatives in US and we will start again. Uh, but now we focus for uh, the our representative in Europe or Finnish. Uh, Mr. Honey, have you gave up teaching completely now? Or are you just like you said, you're just an advisor, so you don't teach anymore at all? or? I'm not formally teaching. I, I I may teach a seminar occasionally or something mm. of that nature. Not formal teaching, yeah. Forever. You're probably all done with all that stuff, right? <laughs> enjoy the retired life. <laughs> I still enjoy it, but it's just, uh, yeah, it's just uh, not yeah. the primary. Yeah. Um, this. So I wanted to go back to, to Hilda's, uh, your, your, so your weapons business, um, I know that you made a couple of videos and you explained the weapons, stuff like that. Um, where can people get a hold of you if they want to, to order some of the, your uh, the weapons that you sell? And can you tell us? Um, obviously, you have a you have a bladesmith that's over there that makes your weapons, right? In, in Indonesia, so these are, like I said, they're made locally over there where you're at, and you sell them there. So where can people get a hold of you if they want to buy some of your weapons? Yeah, uh, the people can like visit my website for hildasilaweapons.com uh, to see like uh, some like uh, pictures or weapons available in there or. As I, like, I'm always like tell them like just contact me directly or if I post some uh, pictures like recently like just kind of like, comment, contact me, contact my business partner, uh, Steve Cantis, who like helped me to sell the weapons in Florida because I ship, I ship the weapons to America. Just wanna make the customers easier to order mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. shipping, is, you know, it's fairly expensive. You know, mm -hmm. if the people like order one. So that's why I ship in bulk to to Florida and and, and yeah. thanks. I did get a sarong from you a long time ago, and the quality is is as excellent. Um, it's from over there, and it's good quality. And uh, I use it frequently when I when I train stuff. So if you guys are going for sarongs, I know that sarongs are becoming hard to find, like in the United States, like authentic ones. So yeah. I know you got the straight from the source authentic ones. So I, I highly recommend you guys. Check her off. You guys are, are practitioners. You want to buy one, or you just want to be cool and wear one. You know, like a <laughs> carry some rocks in it. You know, you got the. <laughs> she, Hilda had a video of, of her weapons maker studio and, and showing showing how he uh, um, made some of the weapons. It might be nice if she reposted. Yeah, yeah. If you get a chance, yeah. I don't, I don't know how to. I'm, I'm, I'm not really familiar with how to pull videos up from here. 
<clears throat> when I get more like situated, I probably do that. But yeah, feel free to post that um, on FMA discussion. So that's one of the, the, the sarongs you sell right there, right? Yeah, this is a sarong, and we still have the sarong as well in Florida. And the sarong is this is like a forget, I think people now is focused on the deadly weapons, deadly weapons. But the sarong is actually is like used, like you know, useful uh, media or tool especially for the women, it's not only for women, even for men, when you don't have the weapons around you and you got the, the you know, like a, uh, like a scarf or the, the serum, mm. it's good, you know, like to, to use it as the, your, the, the, your, your weapon. Mm. Because this, uh, I want to show you, like, for you, like, who put, like, my, my serum. So this is a whole you to use or hold the serum in Sula. Like this, this is our here, right? I'm gonna lower us down again. I'm gonna lower us down again so that people would see you. So here we go. <laughs> this, this is like how you like we use the sarong, hold the sarong in the in sila. Look like this. So put the hand here, and from here, like this. Not here. So this this one is like a, like a good because when you get you know uh, like you're against the the the, the taker with this you can just, like, just snap or you can just tie like this and so on. <laughs> I'm sorry, my 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 my, my brother is raising huh again. <laughs> so from here, from the side over here. So before he like punch me back, the sorrow here is like good. Yeah. We just can do like this. Yeah. Even from here, like just like a chop going. Uh -huh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, sorry, sorry, sorry. You kinda just like chop like this. So you kinda like move, you're gonna you start to move just like tight it up like this. It's down here to chop the chop his neck. Then <laughs> anyway, I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> yeah, that's the how to use the. Oh my god, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. This is uh, how I use the saro. We're gonna have to get that guy a chiropractor after you're done. <laughs> we have to get him a chiropractor or some kind of masseuse or something because his neck's been taking a beating all night over here. <laughs> Thank you for showing us that, though. I appreciate it. Um, so I, I, I just want to just kind of in, in conclusion here, like it's, it's, uh, I know it's getting late for Mr. Hunting and as well and early for you. Um, this has been a great show. I mean, you got you really showed a lot. Um, so I like to ask the final question, like before we, we always like kind of sign off and, and do things. So that would be, what are your future goals? Any future goals, anything down the road? And I'll go ahead and, and, and start with Mr. Hunting first. Um, I made an interest right now just to help Hilda and her dad and, and uh, promote promote their uh, martial arts and and the whole family the whole family I'm willing to help out um, uh, with what they're doing so you know, I just uh, kind of stay in the background and just help them uh, with promotions and, and so on and, and if somebody if somebody uh, out there that's watching or somebody watches this video later on if they want to contact you for a seminar how do they get a hold of you? Um, I think contact me through Facebook is probably the easiest way to do it. Okay. So you heard it here first, guys. Contact Mr. Hunting through Facebook uh, for seminars and uh, for also a wealth of knowledge in, in, in the sea lot. It seems like he's an encyclopedia of knowledge in the, in the system and then sea lot. And uh, Hilda, any, uh, we know you're, you're doing the lawyer thing. You've got that going on. you got the weapons business, full-time mother of four. Uh, there's, there's like pretty much nothing you, you can't do. You're pretty much doing everything. <laughs> I just always see you, plus you manage, you know, to answer. And that's why I, I, I wanted to have you on. You always, you know, what I think I noticed about you is like, if you leave comments, you always comment back and you're always willing to educate people and help people learn, you know, the art of CELOT. So I think that's what's made you, you know, a lot of people like gravitate towards you and follow you. Um, plus you have, you have, you have a good heart. Um, so, with that being said, what, what do you what are your future goals? What, what do you see? What do you see that, that, that your father's system going? Where would you like to see it go? And what are, what are your own like your personal goals like in your journey? Like what do you, what do you want to accomplish? 
actually, you know, beside my my lawyer school and and as my mother, my goal, and my dream is I want to take my dad to do the seminar to meet his students, you know, to his friends, and especially in the U.S. That's my goal, actually. Like I'm always a child to uh, talk to. Yeah, yeah. that's just like for what my uncle done to promote and introduce the Silat uh, family around mm. the world. You know, I know mm. how to, to 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 promoting to promote this the system. So my goal is I want to uh, continue say, for what my uncle done. It's not now. It's different because it's from my dad. It's not for me. But I mm. want like dad to go to his dream. One of his senior students, his friends around the world, and the first place for me to travel is the U.S. Bring my dad to do the big seminar there. Mm. Just that. That's that. Um, and, and, he, and like you said, right now you're not offering classes per se, like you because due to being busy. But if somebody wants to get a hold of you somewhere down the line, and, and you know, they say I, I want to, you know, study, you know, the the Sawanda system. Um, obviously, they can contact you, or is there a U.S. representative besides Mr. Hunting that they can contact? Or yeah, he can like contact me or contact Steve Hunting, uh, contact me directly because for for the program, the training program, we used to share our like uh, the video download, you know, for them, and mm -hmm. then they practice, and we can, you know send me their videos for for my correcting and there's the classes of uh, for like a uh, once a week for the classes but yeah even i'm busy right like now but i'm still like you know if you want to practice you know just just contact me i i'm happy like to, to and, teach you guys yeah. so so facebook messenger facebook for weapons and uh uh obviously the train with you contact you through that okay and yeah, um for the for the website what was the website again so you can like visit my website for the for online class for purchase the weapons to uh, heal-the-silat-weapons.com. That's my website. Okay, guys, you heard it. Um, she'll go ahead and probably post an FMA discussion uh, after the interview. I'm sure she'll probably put a link for the uh, for the uh, online web store and and for classes. Well, it's been great, guys. Um, I really appreciate you, Hilda, coming all the way from Indonesia and. I know you're busy with your kids and stuff like that and you're studying. So I really appreciate you taking the time out. Tell your brother, uh, go see a chiropractor and uh, he can't, he can't bill FMA discussion for his medical pains. He can't, uh, can't file a lawsuit. He can't, you know, do anything. It's, it's, we, we assume no liability responsibilities for demos on the show. So he, he can travel to Chimunde. Chimunde, besides being a martial arts village, is also a healing village. Oh, there you go. <laughs> there you go. He could use that. We use a stick to roll in his neck. <laughs> yeah, that's what no, I was gonna exactly. say. I, that's, I guess apparently that's a thing. Yeah, uh, yeah. But th thank you. Uh, tell your brother he's there. Thank you for for being the uh, a demo partner there. I appreciate it. Um, like I said, he needs a beer and a and a masseuse afterwards. So, um, uh, Coach Danny uh, said that Doc Doherty, which been trying to get on the show, I'm, I've been he's been busy in Dallas. He's still teaching. I, I hope to. Um, and I'm not taking anything away from FMA. Um, you know, uh, but Silat has become like my main uh, martial art as of late. I did the FMA thing for a while. I'm still doing it, teaching it. But um, I want to definitely want to get uh, more Silat practitioners on the show. And maybe, you know, I, I know it's FMA discussion and some people are going to be like, well, you know, it's an FMA. But, you know, we are brothers and sisters of this art. Um, we share many similarities. We share many, uh, not just ge geographically, but like, you know, movement wise and stuff like that there's many you know hand in hand so um i hope people you know will enjoy you know getting these people on there and and, and, and give them the exposure they deserve um mr hunting i know you're retired i want to let you go um thank you i appreciate you for uh everything you uh did tonight uh thank you um it was a pleasure having you on your wealth of knowledge um uh, sometime uh down the line we do a c lot like themes, like history kind of thing. I want to get you back on, so we can we can crack open the knowledge and get you have the knowledge in there and everything. So yeah, definitely appreciate that, Hilda. Uh, appreciate it. Thank you very much. Appreciate you your time. Uh, we'll be in touch because I think what I want to do next somewhere down the line, 
is I want to get a female sea lot practitioner themed episode where I get a couple of maybe I can only have three on here at one time or two um, female practitioners. And maybe we can talk later on and we can you can suggest some people you might know and um, people out, we'll get together and we'll we'll come maybe a themed episode or something. We'll get your brother back on so we can do some more training with him. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> thank you very much, guys. I appreciate it um, for everything, the weapons and everything and, and explanation. Appreciate it. So, uh, yeah. We'll be in touch for sure, Mr. Hunting. I want to say good night to you and uh, Hilda. Obviously, good morning to you. So, uh, yeah, thank you very much. I appreciate it, guys. Bye bye. Bye. All right. Have, Have a good a night. Day. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs>
Take care. Stay safe out there. See you later.